G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel, continuing our New Year's resolution series. Today we are going to be doing the Essendon Football Club. Uh, if you're an Essendon fan watching this and if you're unaware, uh, this is the third Essendon-centric video I've done this off-season. Uh, I've done a video analyzing their best 22 for next year. I've done a video projecting what their best 22 will look like in three years. And if you want to watch that specific Essendon content, uh, up in the top right icon of this video, you can click on it and I've uh, included the links to those videos. And I've done the same for all 18 teams. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about Essendon and isolating eight things that they want to tick off this year that will ultimately lead to a better result overall. Now we've had a lot of new viewers to the channel in the last week or so, uh, which is fantastic for the midst of the off-season. Off One thing I'll ask though is if you are watching the content and you're enjoying it, uh, if you would consider subscribing to the channel, that would be much appreciated. I am uh, obviously going to be making football content pretty much permanently from now on. So if you're looking for some AFL content, uh, this would be a great place to subscribe and it would really help me grow this channel. But anyway, let's crack into what I think SNN should look to achieve in 2024. Uh, some of them are on a micro level, some of them are on a macro level. We'll just work through them. I think I've got about eight for the SNN Footy Club. And the first one is to have a seamless transition of their new recruits. So we know SNN were one of the biggest players this offseason in getting mature, established talent onto their list, plugging gaps in their best 22. And they definitely did that with a degree of success. So uh, Ben Mackay comes in. Obviously, Zerk Thatcher left their back line. They also recruited Xavier Dersma from Port Adelaide. Jade Gresham from St. Kilda side as a free agent, as did Todd Goldstein. So that's four players that will be in and around their best 22. I've said this previously, and this is just a hunch from an outsider looking in, uh, that probably the first three, Mackay, Dersma, and Gresham, you'd imagine are pretty much locked in to be in the mix for round one. I would imagine they're all going to be probably starting on the field too. Goldstein, I'm less sure about. I don't know if he's been recruited as depth or whatever, if they if they see themselves going with a two-ruck combo with Draper and Goldstein there. That'd be interesting to see how that plays out, and it might be the case. But either way, the overall point here is that's you know one-sixth of the 22, more, so, more than one-sixth of the best 22 injected all at once. There could be just some uh, teething issues around, you know, playing all together for the first time, getting that synergy. I think that would be a big focus for Essendon in early days, is just getting those guys integrated into the team and playing good football. The second resolution I have for them is to get get some return on investment for that 2020 draft. So if you think back to 2020, uh, Essendon had an amazing draft hand. They had picked seven, eight, and nine, or at least that's what they became after bids. So we'll call it seven, eight, and nine. In that draft, they took Archie Perkins, Nick Cox, and Zach Reed. And this was talked about as being a central to their, their future hopes or their rebuild at the time as it was being considered. Obviously, Essendon made the finals the next year, but obviously when you have picks at that part of the draft, you really want to nail them. And this is not a criticism of Essendon or those players individually. But when you consider the output from Perkins, Cox, and Reed, it hasn't really paid off yet. There hasn't been the return on that investment yet. And look, two of those are key position players and those players in particular, well, I say Nick Cox is a key position player. I realize it's actually a little bit more unclear on him, but we'll call him that for the sake of this video. Uh, therefore, he's going to take some time to develop, and he's also uh, been battling injury, and that is also the case with Zach Reed, who's a 202-centimeter key defender. So two players there that are 200 centimeters plus and haven't really got on the park consistently. Nick Cox had a fantastic first season, but he's only played the 33 games and only six last year. Zach Reed as well, only played the eight games so far and didn't play last year at all due to injury as well. So uh, Perkins, I'll, I'll mention as well, 62 games, and I think he's tracking along pretty decently. You do think he has that top end potential, hasn't really clicked for him yet, but I think he's been progressing fine. He kicked 18 goals last year at an average of about 15 disposals. So I think this is a, a big year for him, but also just getting Cox and Reed on the park and getting a sense of confidence that they will be you know, long-term players for the footy club because it's a little bit early stages yet. But I think by season four, which this will be, that's definitely one thing they would like to get out of this year. At least the opportunity to be able to pick Cox and Reed in addition to Perkins uh, going forward. Because like I said, it's just about getting return on investment for what was a really good draft hand. The next point is more broad and that is to compete for finals. And I do think there is some degree of urgency for SNN to, to be good here and now when you consider how many players on their list are in their prime or about to hit their prime and you consider their recruiting strategy they had to keep their first round pick. That being said, they also recruited four best 22 players uh, or best 25 players. Uh, when you consider 2021, they made the finals uh, and then 2022 dipped down into the bottom four. They did improve by four wins in 2023, which is a good step forward. However, there were obviously quite a few shortcomings, it has to be said, in particular the drop-off of form, which I'll get to in a little bit. But by round 17, they just beaten Adelaide at Marvel Stadium from memory and they were fifth on the ladder and they just completely crashed and burned after that point. They only had two wins from their last seven games 
and uh, th- that was one point win over S- uh, West Coast and then another win over North Melbourne. So when you also factor in their 21 goal loss to the Giants, it was just a huge drop off from Essendon. That kind of bundles into my next resolution. I've got two separate ones. The first one is they need to genuinely compete for finals. And the second one is to finish the season better. In that seven-game stretch with that 21-game loss, overall there was three losses of over 70 points plus a 40-point loss to the Western Bulldogs and the two wins against the bottom two sides. So what I'm saying here is that had they just been able to be a bit more consistent going into that last seven games, they might have been a bit more of a legitimate finals contender. And when you couple that in with their off-season strategy, their overall list profile, the time for Essendon to really dig in and compete for finals has arrived. So that should absolutely be the minimum expectation internally for Essendon this year. The next resolution I have is about getting a very talented forward line to really click as a unit. And I'm not saying the Essendon forward line hasn't been good, but we obviously saw a little bit of a transient forward line last year when you consider Peter Wright, you know, missed a heap of footy and then they unearthed Kyle Langford as a permanent forward with great success, kicking 51 goals. Um, So you've got Langford and Wright operating in the same forward line as well as Stringer. Perkins is a talented kid. Jai Menzi also had a really good season, kicking 23 goals, I think, from 21 games. And as a youngster, as a small forward, I think that's really good output. You can extrapolate that, and he'll be an important part of that team with with his pressure as well. And you add Jade Gresham to that as well. So a few new faces and just obviously trying to create that synergy with that team. I actually really like that mix because while there's no... Coleman winning potential forward in this current edition of this forward line. I'm probably going to say that and then Peter Wright will win the Coleman. But I really like how they've got three sort of talls or almost talls in Langford, Wright and Stringer where all three of them are capable of 50 goals in a season. And I think that having that dynamic edge where opposition fans need to be kind of wary of all three, but none of them are necessarily an absolute star, but they have the potential to hurt you on their day. I think uh, that Essendon forward line could create problems for opposition teams in 2024. And therefore, harnessing that and cultivating that advantage will be a big focus for Essendon, considering there's a few new faces in there. The next point I have is having a fit and firing Elijah Sardis. I really do like Elijah Sardis as a prospect, and he just played the four games in his first season. But he's fast, he's uh, dynamic, he's a natural accumulator, he plays both inside and out. And again, we've talked about Essendon in the past needing a bigger bodied midfielder, maybe a little bit more of a dynamic edge to their midfield, and maybe a point of difference in particular. I think think Elijah Sardis holds the key to that and will be an important player. So he doesn't need to come out and win the Brownlow, he doesn't even need to win the Rising Star, he just needs to get fit and healthy and show some real uh, linear improvement over the course of the season because I do think he has that potential and naturally any club would want to harness a top line potential player on their list. So I would love to see a larger side come in and play some serious minutes in 2024. And that leads me to the next point and I would like to see Essendon maybe start to facilitate a little bit of midfield transition in 2024 when you consider how many young, young talented players they've got and you know a handful of like aging midfielders there. I just think they could shake up the balance of that. So I'll, I'll speak specific. So the the sort of oldest elder statesmen of that midfielder, Merritt, Parrish, and Shiel. Parrish obviously has been a good player, and I do like him. Yet he does seem to get his critics among Essendon fans. Merritt is a star. Let's leave him out of this. Don't phase him, Zach Merritt out. But someone like a Dylan Shiel could he potentially make way for some of the other guys that could come in and really make a difference? So Archie Perkins, could we see more time? for him at stoppages in 2024. Jai Caldwell as well, I think is a player with a heap of talent and is actually younger than I than I remember. I keep thinking, why isn't Caldwell good yet? And then I remember he's actually, he's actually pretty damn young. But another dynamic player who plays a lot in the forward half, could his impact through stoppages be increased in 2024? And then Ben Hobbs as well, I think, has shown some really good signs. And I talked about Sardos already. So maybe seeing a bit of a transition, I don't want to sound harsh to Dylan Shield, but if Essendon are in a point you know, early in the season where these guys are forcing Dylan Shield out of the side, then I think they're in a great position. I know Shield probably has some injury issues to start the season. I'm not sure exactly where that sits. Uh, but when you also consider Dersmas in this team, probably starts on a wing. Uh, that being said, he probably can roll through stoppages. Some say that's actually his most natural position. And Nick Cox, again, I don't know if he plays defense this year. Does he start on a wing? Um, there's, there's a lot of part-time mids in this team that could really click and lift their output in 2024, and I'm kind of intrigued to see it. And my final point is, and like I said, these are in no particular order, but uh, I'd like to see them find a settled defense, uh, in particular, finding a good tall partner for Mackay and Ridley. And this kind of ties into some previous points I've made in this video. But 
My guess is for round one, and again, this is an outsider looking in. Correct me in the comments, by all means. Mackay starts. Ridley starts. He's a gun. Laverde is probably the third one. But, I mean, there's so many other options there. And I, I do think the benefit of having someone like a Zach Reed ready by round one, not sure where that sits, would be better because it gives them genuine tall timber down back, if that makes sense. Because Laverde and Ridley, as good as Ridley is, probably not suited to being a genuine key back. I'd like to see him more in that third tall role. So you probably want someone like a Reed or a Lewis Hayes or even a Kane Baldwin, who I don't know too much about, come in as that genuine tall defender to, to complement Mackay and have Ridley and Verde battle it out. And maybe maybe Laverde is sidelined this year, who knows? But in an ideal world, it kind of ties back to what I was saying about Zach Reed. I'd like to see him come in, perform well. If Essendon can find a settled back line with Mackay, uh, Zach Reed, and Jordan Ridley as their back three, I think that, that would stack up pretty well. But anyway, guys, that is my take on the Essendon Footy Club and their resolutions for 2024. Little things I think that if they can pull these levers, if they can make these things work, they will be a better side in 2024. And I've commented on it previously, but it feels like Essendon has a lot of players that, that could just explode in the next couple of years, and we'll, we'll see what happens there. But equally, it has been a little bit of a tough stretch for Essendon fans, um, but we'll see what happens. I do think Brad Scott is a fairly good coach in terms of getting the most out of the talent that he has at his disposal. So I think they're one to watch in 2024, and I wouldn't be surprised at all to see these guys play finals. So let me know what you think in the comments, guys. I appreciate your input. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you being subscribed. So for now, I'll say goodbye, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.